All right, hey YouTube, welcome back to a brand new Star Wars Squadrons video. In today's video, I'm gonna be going over what I've found to be the best settings so far. This is gonna be my opinion and pretty much based off PlayStation 4 gameplay with a controller. I haven't had the chance to get a HOTUS or anything like that, but hopefully at some point I can get one and test it and do another settings video for that. But right now, this is your controller settings. So Xbox players, PS4 players, this one's definitely gonna be really good for you because there are some settings that you can actually change that are gonna be super helpful in Star Wars Squadrons. Now, it's not just gonna be sensitivity, it's gonna be a couple of other things that you can change in there as well that's gonna give you a competitive advantage. But before we jump into the video, I just wanna say a huge thank you to the EA Game Changers program for making these videos possible. It wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to do it without them. Guys, you know this is a huge deal for me. It's, I'm really proud to be a part of the program. And because of that, EA has actually given me a couple of Star Wars Squadrons codes to give away for those of you guys that may not have the game yet. So what I need you to do right now, go down below, like the video, and drop which platform you're on. Are you on PS4, PC, or Xbox? Let me know. I have a couple of codes to give away, and I will be giving them away in the future on one of the videos. So make sure you guys drop that comment below, uh, and I hope you guys win. So with that said, being brand new to the channel, if you are, subscribe and turn on post notifications with the bell icon. I would really, really appreciate if you could do that. I'm chasing 40,000 subs right now, which is incredible. I never thought we'd actually get here, but we're getting very close. So with that said, we're going to jump into the settings. Let's do it. All right. So first thing we're going to go into controls, right? Basic controls. You guys have probably seen this or at least looked at it once before. The throttle input mode you can put as continuous or steps. Now, what this means is that steps is going to be your throttle increases and decreases each time you tap down on the analog stick. So if you go down once, it's going to go down a certain amount. If you go down twice, it's going to go a certain amount as well. Whereas if it's on continuous, you have to hold it. So what we're going to do is going to test it on steps. I actually like it on continuous, I prefer it, but steps might be easy to, for you to do. And one tip I will give you guys if you are using it on steps, put your throttle steps increment by 25%. This way, at least you know, if you need to get to 75% speed, which is your sweet spot on your throttle, you can just tap down once on the analog stick and you know you go from 100 down to 75. It's a super easy way to do it and it kind of helps you manage your power system on your engines. The other thing that we can do is throttle down to stop boosting. So basically, if this is switched on, all you have to do is throttle down. I'm pretty sure it's on by default, but you definitely want that on. Uh, going into drift input mode, we're going to have it on hold, which should be the default as well. We don't want to put it on double tap. That can get a little bit annoying, but try it. See how you go. I think it could potentially be worth it. I haven't tested it too much, but I didn't like it. I preferred the hold feeling because it feels like you're actually holding a drift. Power management's gonna stay at basic. Everything's gonna stay regular through there. I turned vibration off for a little while and then I realized that I couldn't tell when someone was actually shooting me half the time, so I turned it back on. Didn't like it being on, the feeling of it personally, but I didn't like dying because I couldn't tell someone was shooting at me either. So definitely uh, probably have vibration on if you guys think of turning it off. Now, here we want to talk about the pitch and your sensitivity. This is where it gets a little bit confusing. For those of you that haven't played any sort of flight games before, let me break down how this works for you. So starting off with pitch, I have mine at 80%. I think this is kind of the sweet spot that I've found for me and where I like my controls to be. I think by default, it's at 70. I've turned it up a little bit because I do like to have that extra little bit of movement around the front end of my uh, Starfighter. But what pitch is, it's basically gonna be the up and down movement of your Starfighter. So that if you think of the, the nose of your Starfighter, for you to go up, or down like that. It's pretty much when you're using the right analog stick and you go to aim up or you go to aim down. If you're trying to track someone, that's what pitch is. Your is your left and right. So again, you think of the nose of the Starfighter if you're in an X-Wing or an A-Wing or whatever it might be. The left and right movement is your your setting. So that's what you want to be thinking about there. Your, I've also got at 80% just to keep a balance between the two. Still playing with these, but this is the sweet spot that I've found for me so far that works really, really well. Now the roll sensitivity I've got at 60%. The reason for this is roll is very sensitive on the controls. So roll is basically if you're gonna barrel and you, you're just gonna hold you know, right on the right analog stick and you're just gonna do 360s in a circle. It's basically the control of how much your Starfighter 
rolls in a turn. So for example, if you're going to go put your Starfighter upside down, this is the setting of how sensitive that is. So understanding the difference between these three mechanics can be super helpful for you guys. If you haven't figured it or played with this yet at all, I definitely recommend jumping into practice mode and at least testing it out because it can be really helpful. Once you find the settings that you're comfortable with, like I said, these are just my settings that I use currently. I'm still playing with them all the time, adjusting them and trying to find an even better spot. But right now, this is what I've been using when I'm playing like competitive mode in fleet battles. Controller throttle sensitivity, I'm pretty sure is still at default at 60%. Haven't changed that at all either. In terms of accessibility, I haven't changed anything in this section. It's all still just the same. Now, flipping over here to the next tab here in gameplay, the thing I want you to change in this settings is this one right here. Auto target next. By default, this is turned off. You 100% want to turn this on because what this does is when you're targeting someone and you kill them or someone else kills them and they explode, this will automatically put you onto the next nearest target. I've found this so helpful and so good in the game because if I'm shooting someone and I hit them and kill them, sometimes I'm being shot in my back and I don't know where that target is. So it'll automatically flip to that person. It'll give me the arrow pointing towards them and I can literally just barrel roll or turn around or do what I need to do to get onto that next target. And it makes it really easy for keeping track of where all the enemies are. So again, this is a really super helpful tip that I can give you guys is to turn that on. Everything else here is default. I haven't changed anything throughout these settings. They're all pretty much standard. Um, nothing else going on in there. Video settings on console, we don't really get much. Film grain, lens distortion, brightness, I haven't changed at all. Audio settings, master volume. Obviously, I have to play with music turned off for copyright reasons for YouTube. But if you guys, I'm sure you guys keep it on for immersion purposes, you know, that old chestnut. But sound effects volume still 100, dialogue volume still 100. You can turn the dialogue volume down if you want to, but everything else is just on the default setting. So I hope this helps you guys out at least at some point because knowing the difference, especially when you come to pitch and yaw and knowing the difference between those and being able to change your gameplay settings and go in and actually make the auto target on, those little tips there, knowing those and understanding how they work is going to be huge, especially pitch, your and roll are going to be the big ones. So practice with them. What I recommend doing is you jump into a practice mode and there's actually an obstacle course in the practice mode. And I'll insert a clip of me playing through that right now. But that's what you kind of want to do to figure out where your sensitivity is going to be best. If you go in there and you feel like you need to turn right a little bit harder or turn left a little bit harder, you know, change those pitch in your settings, understand how the role will affect how your starfighter moves, and that's what's going to ultimately make you a better pilot in this game. Now, don't don't get me wrong, there are still times where I crash straight into a Star Destroyer or, you know, one of the capital ships or even just debris that I can't avoid, but, you know, giving yourself the best opportunity in practice mode to figure out how the flying works is ultimately going to make you a better pilot. So I definitely recommend doing that obstacle course. I spent a good hour probably running through the obstacle course and trying to do it as quickly as possible and hitting as least obstacles as possible as well. And I think ultimately it made me a much better pilot. So give that a go, guys. If you think it's going to be helpful for you, leave a thumbs up down below. I know you guys would appreciate more videos and more tips videos. They are going to be coming. So I'm currently working on 10 tips for Star Wars Squadrons that you guys are going to want to see. So make sure you got the notification bell turned on as well so that you don't miss any of that. But with that said, I am going to get out of here, guys. I appreciate all of you tuning in today. I will see you in the next one. And may the Force be with you, always. The Sith are all powerful. You are no match for me.